Hi there. Now for this question, we're asked to show that 2x plus 1 is a factor of f of x, f of x being equal to 4x cubed minus 7x minus 3, and then go on to factorise this expression. Now there are several ways that we could do this. One is by the factor theorem, and the other one is by algebraic long division. I'll show you both methods. If we start with the factor theorem, I'm assuming that you're familiar with it, but as a brief reminder, if f of x is a polynomial and f of b over a equals 0, then ax minus b is a factor of f of x. And if you're unsure of this, do check out videos that I've got on this, okay? So when I look at 2x plus 1, and compare it to ax minus b, I can see that a would be equal to the 2 and b would be equal to minus 1. So therefore what I've got to do is show that f of b over a, in other words minus 1 over 2, minus a half, turns out to equal 0. And if it does then it must be a factor of f of x. So that's one way that we can do it. And we'll start with that way. So we'll just say that therefore f of minus a half equals, and if we substitute x for minus a half, we've got four times minus a half all cubed, minus seven times minus a half, and then minus three. And if you do work that out, you do get zero, okay? So therefore, we can say that 2x plus 1 is a factor of f of x. Okay, is a factor of f of x. So that means then that therefore 4x cubed minus 7x minus 3, if we take that polynomial there, must be identical to 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1 then, multiplied by another factor. And that factor would have to be a quadratic factor if we're to get an x cubed as the highest power. So we'll say it's something of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay? Now I did say there was another way that we could show that 2x plus 1 was a factor of f of x, and that is by doing algebraic long division. So if I just remove this, I would expect to see that 2x plus 1 would divide exactly into the polynomial. And if we take the polynomial here, 4x cubed minus 7x minus 3. Now because we haven't got any x squared term, remember for algebraic long division, we fill these spaces with a zero, zero x squared in this example. Then we've got the minus 7x and then we've got minus 3. Now if you're unsure of algebraic long division, do check out the tutorials on that. But in the usual way, we'd say what do we multiply 2x by to give 4x cubed and that would have to be 2x squared. And then we multiply 2x squared with all of 2x plus 1 and that's going to give us 4x cubed and then 2x squared times the 1, that's going to be plus 2x squared. We subtract now to find out what the remainder is. 4x cubed minus 4x cubed is 0, and then we've got 0x cubed minus plus 2x squared, and that's going to give us minus 2x squared. We bring down the next term, which is minus 7x, and we start all over again. What do you multiply the 2x by to give minus 2x squared? And that's going to be minus x. So we put that up there. Minus x now times 2x plus 1 gives minus 2x squared. And minus x times the plus 1 just gives minus x. Again, we subtract now these two from one another to work out what the remainder is. So minus 2x squared minus minus 2x squared is 0. Then minus 7x minus minus x is going to be minus 6x. Bring down the minus 3 next. 
and we start again by saying what do you multiply 2x by to give minus 6x and that's going to be minus 3. So minus 3 times 2x plus 1 gives us minus 6x minus the 3. And again now if we subtract to find out what the remainder is you can see that what we have is 0. No remainder then. So that shows us that 2x plus 1 is a factor of the polynomial. It goes in exactly leaving no remainder. So we could say then that therefore 2x plus 1 is a factor of f of x. Okay, if we chose that particular method. Okay, so that's one way. Now we're told to factorize f of x, 4x cubed minus 7x minus 3 in other words. And what we've done is divide by 2x plus 1. So that would give us our quadratic factor, which happens to be then 2x squared minus x minus 3. So by using this method here, we could say that 4x cubed minus 7x minus 3 is identical then to 2x plus 1, okay, multiplied by the quadratic factor that we've got up here, 2x squared minus x minus 3. And we could factorize that quadratic factor further. So we could say this is identical to the linear factor here, 2x plus 1. And then factorizing 2x squared minus 3, we're going to have two brackets, just about squeeze that in there. And it's going to be a 2x and an x, giving us the 2x squared. And then for minus 3, we're going to have minus 3 times plus 1. And you can check out that 2x times the 1 gives us 2x, minus 3 times the x is minus 3x, 2x minus 3x is the minus x. So there's f of x factorized. Now if we have this version, then Factorizing the quadratic means we've obviously got to figure out what a, b, and c are. And we can do this by comparing coefficients. And I'll show you that method, okay? So if we were to say compare, let's say, coefficients of x cubed, then let's just put it down here. Compare coefficients of x cubed. These are the values in front of the x cubed term, okay? So coefficients of x cubed. If we're doing that, then we've got 4 is the coefficient of x cubed on the left here. And this must be equal to any coefficient of x cubed we get when we expand this out. Well, we're only going to get 2x times ax squared. That's the only term that's going to be an x cubed term. So in other words, that would be 2a x cubed. So we've got 4 must equal 2a. And from this it follows that a must be equal to 2 if we divide both sides by 2. Okay so we know it's going to be 2x squared there. And you can see it's working out fine. Okay it's checking out with this. Next I would want to compare the constants. So they're the terms then without any x attached. So if we look at the constants, then what we've got here is that we've got minus 3 on the left. Minus 3 then equals, and the only terms that are going to be constants, they're going to be when you multiply the 1 here with just the c. Anything else is going to have x's attached. So 1 times c there will give us that constant. So c, obviously, is equal to minus 3. And that, again, checks out what we've got here. Now, when it comes to working out what b is, we've got a choice. We can either compare the x terms or x squared terms. I'm going to look at comparing the x terms. But as an exercise, I would suggest you try and work with the x squared terms. You should arrive at the same answer for b. So if we look at the x terms, 
Then we've got minus 7 here on the left, so minus 7. And that's going to equal, and what do we get for x terms on the right here? Well, we're going to have an x term when we multiply 2x with the c. So it's going to be 2cx. So in other words, that would be 2 times the value of c, which we just found out is minus 3. We're also going to get an x term when we multiply 1 now with the bx, 1bx. So that's just going to be plus b. So we've got minus 7 equals minus 6 plus b. So if I add 6 to both sides, we're going to have b equals 6 minus 7. In other words, b equals minus 1. So therefore, what we've got is f of x is going to be identical then to 2x plus 1. So I put that there, 2x plus 1 multiplied by ax squared plus bx plus c. So we've seen that a is 2, so you've got 2x squared then plus bx, b is minus 1, so you've got minus x, and then you've got plus c, c is minus 3. And that takes us back to what we had up here. And we've seen then that this factorises further. We've got the linear factor here, 2x plus 1, and this quadratic factor breaks down to two other linear factors, which we've seen are 2x minus 3 and x plus 1. Okay, so two different approaches then to this particular problem. Now, if I was given this question, I think I would prefer this method actually, purely because it asks us to go on and factorize f of x. So as I was doing this, I found out that there was no remainder, so I proved it was a factor, but I'd done half the work for this question by getting the quadratic factor here. Okay, so I think of both methods, as I say, that's the one I would prefer, but I leave it up to you to decide.